exactly what Goldust wears in matches. <laughs> it does. <laughs> All right, let's see who we have next. Let's uh, meet Adrian. Not bad. I was expecting some pigs to walk in uh, here. Yeah, but you were. We have adorable concerned. Adrian. All right. They ain't even half bad. Nice job, baby. Nice boobs. So what are those? What, I mean, how big did you go with those boobs? Like a those D are, These are... These are... These? D D double, D double D. Definitely double D. over the D. Okay. Over Here's uh, Adrian. Let's meet Adrian. Adrian is showcasing a red lace ah. triangle bra with matching tap, tap pants. Not bad. Hey, Robin, do you ever wear lingerie? Sure. Doesn't everybody? Hey, you, hold, you can see your whole ass in that thing, too, right? It's see-through. Not bad. I, you know what? I don't care about, like, lingerie so much my chick wearing lingerie. Oh, come on. You don't like to take that off? Uh, uh, Casey, put that on. Let me see how it looks on you. I, I love the lingerie. Now, are you That's nude great. under there? Yes, she is. Yeah, I think I can kind of see some beef. Oh. What's your name? Adrian. Adrian. And uh, you got a kick-ass little body on you? Thank you. Yeah. And and you can... Are there panties on under there? Yes. Oh, there are. But they're little and lace. <laughs> yeah, I thought I could see some beaver. Uh, no. your, that's your imagination <laughs> working overtime. Mm-hmm. Well, very nice. Very good. So you like Linda Lingerie? Yeah, it's not bad. I got to say. I mean, it's a, it's a little over the top, but it's kind of nice. What's wrong with the second outfit then? As long as your chick has a body like these girls, then you're okay. Yeah. I wonder if you some fat slob running around in this stuff. Uh, you well, know, it could be, it could be you upsetting. you got to have the right body for it. That's right. Or let me see the next outfit. Let me see Cindy. Hey, Howard, should we, should we have Linda read the thing when she comes in? Oh, do you have a description? Yeah, I she's can. got index cards. Because one thing about your voice, you can make lingerie sound really unsexy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that accent. All right, you do the explanation. What are we yeah, looking at that's here? that's what we want to hear. Cute Cindy is sporting a black embroidered nude camisole with tap pants. Hot pants? Tap, tap pants. pants. What's a tap pants? Those are those little like hot shorts. pants. Yeah. Hot pants. Let me see you, baby. Could our could our runway sound any noisier? <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> it's good. Um, well, you got the big boobs too. Are those fake? No, they're mine. Real? Mm -hmm. Look at you. <laughs> All right, with the big boobs. Well, thank you. Yeah. You two related or what? No. No. We're just very healthy girls. Right. <laughs> and I'm from Jersey. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> a Jersey girl. Already. I just ruined it, didn't I? I love Jersey. <laughs> Any of you girls in pain and have Oxycontin? <laughs> oh. uh, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Have you, you had me a few of your pills? You recently had any surgery. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's meet your next model. You do the description now. Okay, uh, this is Tina. Yes, terrific Tina. <laughs> she is showcasing a black lace one-piece cat suit along with her long whip. Whoa. Oh, How big did you oh make your God. jugs, honey? That's the knockout punch. Chick just walked in with the biggest jugs right. I've ever seen. How big are those? Double D. Double D. Maron, <laughs> did you go to the doctor and say, look, I want them as big as you can make them? No. I don't think that they're that big. Oh, baby. Come on. <laughs> in what planet? I'm big yeah. on the top. Wow. They're not that big. Not that big. <laughs> Did the doctor say that's too big and you shouldn't go that big? Or he just said, okay, I'll give no, you what you want. No, he said it's a good size for my body. Look at the, I mean, that is unbelievable. <laughs> that's, the, that's the biggest rack I think I've ever seen in my life. No, get out of here. I'm not kidding you. You feel sexy in your lingerie? Yes. That's good. Do I look sexy? Yeah, well, yeah sure, honey. Sure, with your little whip and everything, your little leather hat. Yeah, sure, you look good. I mean, you're Thank a big, you. you're a large sized woman. Well, aren't they supposed to twirl around on yes. the and Turtle around. Let me see your ass. Your ass is in bed. Oh, my. This chick will beat the hell out of you. Hey, whip Linda, will you? <laughs> 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 all right, honey. Well, I tell you what, all you girls are very nice girls. Don't get me wrong, and uh, I like lingerie. And Linda's lingerie is nice, right? Okay, I, I was expecting a real horror show, but Linda, you, uh, you've put it together a nice little program Thank here. You. No, no, no need to be nervous. I'm not anymore. But I do want to tell you, Howard, this is my 69th show. Oh, wow. I'm so glad you told me that. <laughs> I do want to tell you, Howard. <laughs> Linda's I'm Lingerie is located at 1300 Highland Boulevard in Grassmere, Staten Island. For more information, go to lindalingerieusa.com. All right, Linda, we gave you a little, little, uh, little, boost there. little boost there. Go over and say hi to Linda. All right, girls, thank, thank you. you. Nice seeing you. Nice meeting you. What the hell was going on here with Linda's lingerie? <laughs> lingerie show. That was nice. I appreciate that. I was... You ever been to some of these lingerie stores out on, like, Long Island and Staten Island and Jersey? 
Uh, yeah. Oh, yes. There's a movie and there's a reality show there somewhere. I'm not sure what it is, though. Actually, uh, I went to a Victoria's Secret with Dana recently. That, Ooh. Was, that was a lot of oh, fun. Oh, were you? Did you yeah. go through the... Uh, well, it was my birthday. So uh, That was part of your present? <laughs> they have $700 panties there. Well, like, I mean, how do you justify that? It was a little over the top. Uh, yeah, and what do you do with a pair of $700 panties? Are you afraid to wear <laughs> you them? You take them off. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what did you buy there? Did you end up, like, did she it's try stuff powder, on? Powder blue number. Yeah. Uh, Dana has a very tan body, so I like a light color on her. What is she, tan Does she go to the tanning bed? I don't think so, no. She just naturally, she's she's a darker skin. You don't even know what color she is. No, she was I, I You don't think she goes to a tanning salon? I mean, I've seen she's her. She's got to. I think, uh... She's tanning year-round. I think, uh... Well, she's naturally darker, but I think she, maybe every once in a while she does. I mean, it's not like a... Have you ever talked to her? Uh, sometimes we'll sit down and talk about my life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she said... She has in the past, but it's not a regular thing with her. I so for your birthday, her. you went to Victoria's Secret? Yeah, we went over there. Yeah, and um, what did you buy? Well, I bought uh, this, like, powder. It was sort of like what the second chick was wearing, that yeah. red bottom, like yeah. a see-through thing. Uh -huh. But it was it was powder blue. Now, what happened? Did she take you home and then, like, slip into it? Uh, no, what she does is... Uh, she, I, I'm I'm usually in the bedroom watching like the Yankee game. Right. And she she goes and, <laughs> naked. She goes ah. and she, she knocks and uh, comes in uh, with the with, with the, the stuff. new outfit. Yeah. Right. And then what do you do? Do you stop watching the Yankee game, or you say, "And when the Yankee game's over, I'm going to bang well, you." Well, usually we wait for the half inning to end, right? And then uh, no, I get right. You get, she is. Dana, you put down your Parmesan hero and you, <laughs> you bang her. Dana has a, a smoking box. Yes, and, yes. Uh, it, uh, yeah, you get very distracted when she walks in the room. Right. So, you, so you like lingerie? Yeah, I do. I think it's a. Uh, it's kind of fun. It adds a little. It makes it a little interesting. You know. And what do you do? You remove it, and it's exciting. I'll tell you what. Yeah, you know. Or do you bang her Does with it? Does she dance a little bit for you? Or? Yeah, and if, you know, you know. Me and Mr. Smooth, <laughs> I rip it off. Do you rip it off, or do you just push oh, it to the side and bang I, her? I try to. I've done that before. Yeah, I do that, which uh, is really sexy. Right. But I, usually, I, I try to like be slow and smooth, but it ends up sort of awkward, awkward and cumbersome. <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, uh, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say that uh, <laughs> I was at Victoria's Secret, <laughs> but uh, I got excited in the Victoria's Secret store. Why? I almost was out to my I went in bathroom in the mall or something. I don't know, because we're together shopping for that, and you're discussing, and there's hot chicks who work there. They come over and help you. I went in there with Beth, and then it got kind of uncomfortable. It was like... Uh, really? Yeah, I don't know. She was like, oh, I have this, I have this, and, and, but, and, then, like, and then like that was it. I don't know. Somehow we ended up not getting anything. We started having a discussion about, you know, do you like this and why do you like it? And I'm sitting there, you know, you're in a public place having, you're talking about sex. Yeah, just buy it. And a chick comes over and... Uh, I think it's hotter if they just go and buy something and surprise you with it. First of all, I'm such a sucker. That chick saw me come. By the time we left there, I bought sexy cologne for him. <laughs> yeah, that's going to help. <laughs> she looks at me and she goes, oh, I think you need for him. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I have for him? purchased some sexy yes. perfume. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you know I'm always honest with you on these excursions. <laughs> <laughs> and I bought some sexy cologne for him yeah. <laughs> with some cabbage. Hey, Benji, why would you send me this email? I, 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 so, email? I don't understand What him. email? You sent me an uh, email that said, he goes, I'm flipping through Stuff Magazine, and he's reading it, and it says, he says, I found this incredible article that said close to 20% of all adults in the United States have a cockroach living in their ear canal. So I'm, I'm like, I, I write back, you know, what the F? You know, this is a joke. Why, why would you... Why would I send it? Why would you send that to me? Are you being serious? Yeah. Thought, it's interesting. I think it's an interesting... It's interesting if it was true. I, listen, I said it was in, the, in their useless facts. But it's not a fact. I, did you... I don't know. But, I, I looked into it a little bit in the internet, and there seemed to be some basis for it. Is it real? or a, I don't know. You're telling me 20%? They didn't, put it, they didn't put it in as a joke. Have a cockroach living it, in their it ear It was canal. not put in as a joke. He says it was in useless facts, which would mean it was true. They didn't indicate it was useless. a joke at all. A cockroach living in an ear canal. How would that be? <laughs> I don't know. Living. Living. They're I crawling don't. around in there. 20% of Americans. They're doing laundry. I mean, I think it's mm. worth looking into. Uh, you know, look into it. So why don't you look into it yeah. if we're sending it? Are you being serious? Yeah. That's not the kind of thing that we send to each other and say, hey, this might be interesting to look into for the show. No, I mean, it's just not true. Well, you're just... 
Uh, where have you ever heard that? That would Snow be a major magazine. story. <laughs> that would be like a yeah, major... that would be headline news. That's bigger than 9-11. Well, you've we never heard of it, so I guess it's not true. I don't believe it's true. No, I, I don't. I hope it's not true. I never heard of cockroach Maybe living in, in somebody's ear. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I just want to say that uh, the reason I lost my hearing was a cockroach. <laughs> a family of cockroaches. Was living. <laughs> I mean, why don't we ask Stuff Magazine? I don't want to ask Stuff Magazine. Why don't you... All right, I'll call and that's now. the other thing my guys do. They all go. They all have great ideas, and they go. Somebody should get the tape from this movie. Uh -huh. Nick's famous. I mean, Nick sends me more emails. Like, you know, I was watching a movie the other day. Somebody should get the tape. Well, why don't you get the tape? I would be happy to call Stuff Magazine. We'll today, do it. If then. you're interested, say I just called Stuff Magazine and found something out that's really interesting. All right, I'll uh -huh. do that today. The guy send me stuff and he expect me to do something. Right, you're supposed to do all the research. It just sounds totally wrong. Have you ever heard of a cockroach living in somebody's ear? I mean, wouldn't that irritate you? I mean, I mean, who have you known that has a cockroach in their ear? Unless that's like like some kind of weird thing, like like in Mexico, like the Mexicans come here and. But he said Americans, right? Yeah, Americans. Yeah. What Americans got a cockroach in his ear? They're not here legally. If they are, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry mm -hmm. about it. Yeah, Mike, go ahead. Did wrong. Hey, Howard. Yeah. What's up? I know this this girl that she lives in an apartment building. It's not so clean, and she has a cockroach living in her ear. She went to the doctor. It was in there for about two months. You're kidding me. I'm not even joking. And it stayed alive. It was, it was alive, and it laid the eggs, and her ear got infected. She had she had to get an operation. Oh my God! I swear to God, no joke. So I don't know about that fact, but I know and, it's and, fact. And, and she tells people? Would you tell anyone this? Never. No, well, she told somebody, and somebody told me it didn't. It wasn't supposed to get around, but it did. I have a mouse that lives in my ass. <laughs> that means <laughs> anything. You don't tell anybody. <laughs> I mean, I don't even believe that. <laughs> I know people are... And 20% of American... You realize yeah, that's how many people a that is? large number of people. How many people live in America? Does anybody know? A couple of hundred million? I think it's... 30 million. Around. 280. Robin, you look hot, Robin. Thank you. You're looking good. 280 million. 20% of 280 million is a billion people. <laughs> you went the wrong way. Oh. Well, that's like 20-something people. 20 million. That would be 20 million people. I don't believe or it. Or something like that. I don't 20, believe no, it. No, 20% of that is million. actually, yeah. Like, 40 million no, no, people. 4 million. 4 million? 28 and 28. It's 20%. 10% it's it's of no, 280 million. It's 28 million. 40 million. Oh, my God. Will you stop <laughs> saying things? Don't 20, say that, Benji. Stop it. 28 million times 10 is 280 million. So it's, you're talking right. about 56 million people would have a cockroach living in there. Right. Room. I don't believe it. <laughs> I just I don't, don't believe it's it. It's a lot of people. I don't know if they mean permanently. They might mean like just... just I understood. But I don't believe it. But, yeah, that's an epidemic. Yeah, Jerry. <laughs> hey, Dylan Howard. Yeah, you know what it is? I'm an exterminator. You know what it is? Like lower income housing. Well, it's not everybody, but... The smaller German roaches, the smaller ones you find in your kitchens and stuff. But they get in the baby's cribs, they'll climb in the baby's ears. That's why a lot of times you'll see people with the, the cotton in the baby's ears. They'll go inside, they'll lay the egg sack inside there. And that's why a lot of times like they'll they'll hatch inside the ears and they'll live in there. It's you know, I don't think you'll find it in wealthy areas, but it's like a lot of times you the bad areas and stuff. Oh my god. So you think there's about fifty million people do having that problem? Well there's a lot of you know, you think about it, all the cities and all the projects and it's, it is true, though, because a lot of seminars we go to, they talk about it. And what do you do to get rid of it? Do you spray, like, raid in your ear? Or, I mean, no, seriously, no. what do you do? No, after they lay the egg, you know, egg sack, and the kids all start having ear infections, they go to the hospital, and they go to the doctor, and they just pull them out. That's you know? sickening. Ugh. Ugh. They don't live there forever. It's just they hatch, and then they come out. It's nasty. <laughs> Yo, you know what else I know, Howard? I know that um, throughout the course of your lifetime, every human will eat about ten spiders. Yeah, I've heard that. I could believe that. They sneak into your mouth when you sleep. Right. That I believe. I found spiders on my pillow when I was a kid and stuff. That's what else you know, Casey? Yeah. yeah. I, oh, there's a lot he knows. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here's the new segment, What Else Do I Know? <laughs> <laughs> we'll be doing this every day at about 7.40. Tell the people, Robin, you had uh, a hornet's nest in your hair extensions. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, wow. I, there's a really weird story in the Daily News this morning about... A kid who, um, I guess he was s somewhat paralyzed on one side of his body. A little kid, like a four-year-old, because his father or something, or somebody got him in a car accident and he was paralyzed. And it turns out the family dog that they've only had for two weeks ate his fingers off and the kid couldn't feel it. He was asleep. Oh, my God. Because what kind of dog? I'll read it to you. 
Uh, this is in Tampa. A five and a half week old puppy. First of all, you shouldn't even have a five and a half week old puppy in your house because it's too young. Too right? young. A mixed breed Chow and Pitbull, two of the oh, worst breeds on oh, the planet. No wonder. Chewed four fingers off a semi paralyzed six year old boy while the child slept. Dontavius Bryant did not feel the horrific mauling because he lost sensation on his left side after a hit-and-run car crash. That's what it was, a hit-and-run car crash a year ago. Dontavius's 10-year-old brother, who shares a bed with him, found blood on the bed when he awoke, sometime between 5 in the morning and 5.30 in the morning. My brother told me to look at my hand, said Dontavius, sitting in a wheelchair at Tampa Children's Hospital with his hand wrapped in white gauze. I looked at it and was bleeding. Animal control officials destroyed the puppy, uh, whose name was Chaka. Dontavius and his two older brothers received chalk as a gift three weeks ago. So they got the puppy At like a two week. Two weeks old or yeah. something. Dontavius, who still use who's, who gets a puppy a week old? What's going on in this country? Ugh. Dontavius, who still has use of his right hand, is taking his latest injury in stride. I'll be okay. I can still play video games with one hand, he said. Oh, my God. Wow. How about the uh, the, 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 the dad who raped his daughter? And they let him out on bail. Did you read that one? That's mm. even worse. The Syracuse father was released on bail and returned home yesterday, despite admitting to police that he raped his 11-year-old daughter, who then committed suicide. Oh, she's not in the home, then. No. <laughs> she's, she's safely dead. Oh, oh God. Timothy Lucy, 46, confessed to police that he threatened to cut off the girl's hair if she resisted him. He was arraigned yesterday on rape and sodomy charges, then released yesterday on $20,000 bail. And guess who gave him the bail? The mom. The people from the church. No, come on. The people from his church got together and bailed him out. What's up with them? I really don't know what it takes to get people outraged these days, said the uh, uh, district attorney. Lucy's daughter, Valerie, hanged herself with a thick metal chain from a bedpost on September 30th, just hours after her father had led her into a bathroom where... He told her he was going to cut her hair. Once she was in the bathroom, he locked the door. And this is his confession. She didn't want to go with me. She loved her hair and I threatened her. I knew it would bother her if I cut her hair. Then I, I told her to take her clothes off. I bruised her left arm as I took off her clothing. She put up a little bit of a fight, but I was stronger than her, he said. And then he raped her. Wow. Oh, my God. That's his biological daughter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the, the, the church people bailed him out. What the hell is that? Well, there's a church. I mean, he must have been a good contributor. <laughs> I guess. According to court documents, Lucy came under suspicion after an autopsy revealed physical signs that Valerie had been sexually abused before her death. The father was, a, was allowed to return to his house, although city court judge Langston McKinney ordered him to have no contact with his two surviving children. Might uh, be a good idea. Well, how are they going to stay away from it in the house? I don't know. An elderly neighbor said, I can't understand why this guy was allowed out. This is so sad. We're all in shock. What? Yeah, you What's read going stories on? like this. You know, what is wrong with everybody? Tommy Chong's in jail for selling paraphernalia. Go figure that out. <laughs> we get such a whacked out country. So, Man. There's so, so many things bongs. wrong with that story. Yeah. Hey, Jason, you're on the air. Hey, Howard. How are you? Hey, now. Hey, I uh, got a cockroach story for you. Uh, my wife used to work in the hospitality industry. She was working for a hotel, and one of the housekeepers came in one day horrible, horrible headaches, like bad migraines, and it just got her to the point where she just couldn't work anymore. She asked them to take her over to the ER. So the one of the employees drove her over to the hospital, came back a couple hours later, and they had removed a cockroach from her ear. And she was told that apparently the cockroaches are attracted to the earwax, the smell of the earwax or whatever, and they bury themselves in there. Yeah. Oh, my so God. She doesn't know how long it's been in there, but apparently it was like an inch long, which is, you know, it's pretty big. Yeah, that's I, big. I can't imagine how you wouldn't feel it, but wow! And they're they, alive. Yeah, it was alive and everything. And I, you know, I don't know how long it was in there or how long she had been experiencing headaches. But My it must God! Have been, if she was having a headache that bad, I don't know what the hell it was doing in there. Oh, Benji, and you I, don't hear anything. You don't feel anything. I can't. That's what I'm thinking. But I don't know. But then she came from. You know, she she bust in from a pretty bad area. So I don't know if maybe just health problems are kind of expected in those areas or what. I don't yeah. know. All right, Benji, I, I officially apologize to you. All right. Evidently, there is some reality to this. Unbelievable. Wow. Oh, how creepy would that be if you had a mm. cockroach in your ear? I'd hate that. Hey, is Ludacris here or is he not coming in? What does Ludacris do? I forget his music. 
Me too. I'm confused. I always think he's bumping up against the wall. Uh, yeah. That's Who mystical. Mystical. I don't know. I, I, Will says he's a big deal um, amongst the kids. Ludacris is a dude who, uh, didn't Bill O'Reilly ruin yeah, his chance to be a spokesperson for Pepsi? Pepsi. Something right. Something is going on between yeah. him and uh, Bill O'Reilly. Yeah, Bill O'Reilly said he wasn't a good role model and Pepsi got rid of him, but then they hired Ozzy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he's a good role model. Right, so that created some... Uh, All right. Ludacris is here, I'm told, but we have to take a break and then we'll meet him. We're going to be back right after these words. I I again when I'm... Spying on Gary. <laughs> yeah. It's the best beer for spying. I'm, I'm going to drink a beer, uh, and I'm going to write down, uh, breath stinks 1020. <laughs> breath still stinks 1021. <laughs> Pick up a 12-pack of Heineken keg cans for your tailgate party. Enjoy Heineken and enjoy the, candy the game. Bar 1024. Heineken, it's all about the beer, and you will love Heineken. New York's new music alternative. 92.3 K-Rock. Stand up! Yeah. That's a real brother. Stand up. Is this Luke? Stand up. Yeah. When I move, you move. Yeah. When I move, you move. Yeah. When I move, you move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Bring that back. When I move, you move. Yeah. Just like that. When I move, you move. Just like that. Yeah. When I move, you move. Just like that. Yeah. We'll meet Ludacris in uh, just a second. So many people calling in with cockroaches in their ear. Ugh. Wow, I, I guess that um, little fact was true. Uh, Joe, just uh, give us the, the, the final word on that. All right. You're a paramedic? Yeah, Brooklyn. All right. Go ahead, you're on the air. Howard. Yeah. How are you? <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a paramedic in Brooklyn, right? Yeah. And I can't tell you the number of times that cockroaches are in people's ears. Wow. I can't believe this. Didn't know it. Never heard of this. This should be a major story. I, I, I'm not even playing with you. You should see You should see the way they shake, like when it's in their ear. It's like they have a little seizure. And we bring them to the hospital, they put a little lidocaine in their ear, and they pull it right out. Sometimes there's more than one. We just did a search on the Internet on, like, cockroaches in people's ears. Listen to this. Cold turned out to be a cockroach. In ear, a Romanian student who thought she had caught a cold discovered a cockroach had buried it, burrowed into her ear. The 20-year-old sought medical advice when she awoke with a headache. She was told the cockroach had traveled into her inner ear and died. The student, named only as Maria P. by the something newspaper, attends the sports academy at some university. Uh, the doctor who removed the cockroach said the insect entered up to her inner ear. The girl was lucky it died. Otherwise, she could have lost her hearing. Is that true? Whoa. Well, you don't it, want to fool it, around in there. She told they're me that... In the they're in the projects all the time in their little ear. It, it's children, adults. It's, it's mind-boggling. So 20%, I, I believe it 100%. percent i got to come to that meatball defense. She told me that before she goes to bed, she now puts cotton wool up her nose and in her ears. Another student called Anna N. told the paper she had blown a cockroach from her nose. Wow. She said, one morning I noticed my nose was running. I thought I'd caught a cold. When I blew my nose, a cockroach came out. It was Ugh. awful. A cockroach. Whoa. All right, listen, I gotta go. Yeah. Out of your fat. Yeah. Out of your fat. Thank you. I don't know if you heard that. I heard it. Wow. It's a paramedic. Yeah, Carl. Carl. Yes, Howard. Yeah. How are you? Good. My mother had a, a roach in her ear in the early sixties. Wow! Yeah. I can't believe this. this is a major story. Yeah, one of the first uh, big words I ever learned. I was about seven or eight years old. Was irrigation. God, I'm going to you surround my bedroom with roach motels. Really. Right? I don't have roaches, thank God, but I mean, I mean, that's just too weird. Yeah. They're attracted to the earwax. Ugh. I guess. That's what it, that's what some guy said. Yeah, it was a little kid at the time, but... See, uh, there's a guy on the phone who thinks it's an urban legend, but evidently it's not, Alan. It's not urban legend. Alan? He's gone, obviously. Oh. Yes. Yes. All this thing about the cockroach, it's an urban legend. Evidently not. Well, I saw it on A&E on that show, Urban Legend. Well, 
There's about 50 people who called me who all said they had cockroaches in their ear. Yeah. I would have thought it was an urban legend, too, but it's not. No, we haven't had anybody call and say, I had a cockroach in my ear. There, here's a guy on the phone right now. Well, everybody say, hey, Terrence. I heard someone. Whoa, 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 the guy's mother. Hey, Terrence. Yeah. You had a cockroach in your ear? Yeah, um, back in 93, um, I was, uh, I woke up and I kept hearing some of my ears, like my earwax was swishing around in my ear, and I'm like, what the heck is that? So I ain't think nothing of it, so like about a week go by, and I was walking to the store, I kept hearing something swishing my earwax in my left ear, kept swishing around, like making like a mushy sound noise in my ear, I'm like, what is that? So I dug, and my ear started itching. And then I, I dug my finger all the way in my ear, and I started, like, like itching my ear. And then, next you know, I, I see a roach leg on the tip of my damn finger. I don't believe A it. roach egg? I swear, I swear to Robin, Robin, I swear to God, I swear to you. And then, next you, you know, I like bass music. I listen to a lot of bass music, and I hum a lot of bass music, you know, to myself when I'm walking to the store. And I got my eardrum vibrating. The thing popped out on my shoulder. I swear to you not. I swear it popped right out of my ear. I couldn't the believe doctor, it. The doctor on that show were saying that the wax would kill them. It would have not allow them to breathe. I swear to you, I swear to you, God, I swear it popped right let out me, of my let ear. Let me ask you this. Is it hard to get laid when a cockroach comes out of your ear? <laughs> <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I always think of it in terms of that. All right, well, thank you for the call. All right, thanks, Al. See, I would think that the wax would kill the cockroach, too, but I don't know. Ugh, God, that whole thing is just too gross to think about. This guy says ludicrous is better than mystical. Oh, yeah? Right, Calvin? Yes. You know that ludicrous yeah, is better than mystical? Man. How do you know ludicrous is better than mystical? How do I know? Yeah. Well, I listen to both their music, but let me tell you, mystical's lyrics, just the way he presents himself, is just a whole lot better than, than mystical. Completely different. All right. I mean, it might sound similar to you, but... Someone who listens to hip hop on a regular basis, you know the difference immediately. All right, thank you. Wow. <laughs> All right. Ever had a cockroach in your ear? <laughs> All right, this is ludicrous. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, boy. I never used to snore in my sleep to this Yeah. Started. Warm thoughts fill the hot headed. Hey, tonight on E, watch uh, E, uh, win a date with Sunset Time. There's ludicrous. Look at this guy. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, man. Don't be afraid in here, man. You got friends here. How you doing? You got some major bling bling. What's up? You got some major dough going on there. I'm thinking your jacket's worth about two grand. Just all What's that going money. on, man? What do you say? Huh? What do you say? I say, how the hell is how the hell are y'all doing? We're this doing morning? good. How you doing? I'm letting my nuts hang to the floor, man. What's yeah, going you're my kind of guy. I like yeah. that. My What's nuts that? always hang to the floor. <laughs> That's a party. <laughs> it's always interesting watching a guy in the green room who, who may not have heard the show a lot of times, and he, you keep going, yeah, yeah, and he goes, what's what all the yeah, yeah is about? It's a black thing. That was dope, though. You yeah. Was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was doing the ad-libs in the background. I was loving it. Yeah, I was trying to get into it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. When I hear your music, I want to go, yeah. That's a good thing, yeah, man. Yeah, it's good, right? You bring something out in me. It's you emotional. Know That's what music is supposed to do. That's I right. Even hear you going, yeah, yeah. And he wanted to know you did that. Yeah, that was me. Yeah, <laughs> hit, right. hit, hit me some of that music. I'll, I'll show you what I do. Yeah, yeah. See, yeah, yeah, that's where you get it from, yeah, right yeah. yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. You didn't even know, <laughs> you didn't know that was me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll give it to you, honey. I could give it to a black chick. Oh, you want to lick you? Where? What? Wait what a second, that? brother. Where are we Whoa. going? <laughs> that was the first album, man. Yeah. Come on. Man. Yeah, <laughs> that was way I was three three years ago, right there, man. Hey, I hope you still feel the same way. Hey, man, you know. Yeah, I thought brothers don't lick. Brothers don't lick. Yeah, you say you're gonna lick her. What were you gonna say there? You're gonna lick her from the from the head to the toes, man. I know. Uh, we have an intern here who says you banged her friend, <laughs> and that you wouldn't. You said you had a big Johnson, and that you gave it to her really good, but you would not perform oral on her. 
Is that right? Or is yeah. that urban legend? I don't know. That's, that's, uh, sounds like <laughs> that urban right? legend. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sounds like yeah. hella urban legend. I'll tell right you there, what. Man. On a one night stand, I ain't going to do oral on some chick. Yeah, that's not a black that. or a white thing. That's just the way it is. I mean, you don't know what's brewing down there. She might have a cockroach in her hair. You a sl- one timer is not getting it. You huh? slap a rubber yeah. on me. I, I, I'd rather bang a chick with a rubber than just, you know, give oral without sure. any protection. You know, I'm from the peach state, so, you know, it's like they got to be peachy clean, man, for real. <laughs> you know, way before. Before they, they can't do that. Yeah, you just can't on the first date, <laughs> right? Right. You right. gotta know sure. somebody, right? Let me see really, if that's a really real. Know somebody. <laughs> where's that chick? Where, where, where's our intern? Let me find out if this is real or not. Maybe you could <laughs> fill us in. Yeah, yeah. Oh, here's our intern. Oh. My. <laughs> now what is this? A friend of yours had sex with Ludacris? Yeah. When did that happen? I guess probably last year. Were you single at the time? You're single, right? Yeah. I hope so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Edit that out. Man. How'd she meet Ludacris? Um, well, I'm from Atlanta. Yeah. And so it's kind of the Atlanta people. But so all the Atlanta people Lu- get to have sex with Ludacris? Oh, she knew Ludacris. Nah. <laughs> she knew him. She she told me some good stories about him. Wow. What would she say? <laughs> she said that, um, she said that. He had a big wiener. That he had a big wiener. All right. Wiener was the word she used? No. no. Okay. She used schwanz. And did he hurt her? Is that what Whoa. the... <laughs> Emotionally. <laughs> did he hurt her? No, but apparently he likes her, and he would invite her to, like, award shows and stuff. Really? Yeah. Oh, so she must be hot, your friend. Yeah, she's she's very pretty. White chick, black chick? What is she? Black chick. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 Ladies and gentlemen... All good. Yes, Rush Limbaugh. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, apparently ludicrous... <laughs> <laughs> has dated this young woman's friend. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just letting y'all go with it because I know it's not true. I don't invite oh, nobody God. to a damn award show, man. Oh, I'm just going to let y'all speak. Just keep it going. This is entertaining. What award show? Maybe. maybe uh, I th- I feel like you invite her maybe to some VMAs or something in Europe. Nah. <laughs> nah, you don't Europe. take Sam to oh. the beach, hell baby. Nah. What's her first name? Can I say it? First name? I don't know. Is it all right? Yeah. Is it all right? Jamia. Jamia, no. No. She might have been lying to you. Good I think she dated, she dated Mystical. No, not Mystical. <laughs> <laughs> good try. What, were, what were the stories? I mean, is there so a he had, so, it was, so it came out pretty good. He was good in bed, right? He was good in bed. This is true. I don't, I don't think that she said that he was that good orally. Yeah, right. He wouldn't do it. Yeah, because, right. Right. See. But apparently, <laughs> he, he really liked her. I know, you know, he... Um, she would invite me sometimes to go over to his house. You've been to Mr. I mean, Ludacris. <laughs> I haven't been there, but I know where, I know where he lives. Uh, Ludacris, it's Jamea. What should I wear to the Source Awards tonight? <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, so you're saying there's no truth to this? <laughs> nah, hell no, nah, man. Zero truth. You've got nah, a stable of ladies. That's why I was in here listening to her. He's shooting to, me trying bad trying eyes. To it out. Yeah. <laughs> you uh, you have a stable of ladies, but Jamea isn't one of them. Nah, no, no, no. Yeah, there is a She's stable. a hot one, too. Really? Yeah. You got She's a picture? You, you got I'll a lot go of out friends, huh? Yeah. I have a lot of friends. A lot of friends, that's good. And you get that a lot? Do you get a lot of women who claim to have made love to Ludacris? Man, I don't... Not really. i no. be real with you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That is the first time. <laughs> <laughs> well, in any case, leave her number here. I'll take a look at that. Fabulous. Yes, thank you. All right, well, you, you see, this is what goes on around uh, celebrities. I see, man. It sounds like somebody you might want to take to an award show, you know. <laughs> oh, hell yeah, I would. You gotta be careful. For she sure. runs right back and tells all her friends. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you only go out with black chicks? You have a bang a white chick? Oh, man, you know, I have banged a white chick before. Look at you, you know yeah. I'm not, I don't discriminate, man. Right, nice. For sure. Damn. Yeah. What's the ratio, though? I mean, when you, you get a lot of girls... What, like, like, would it be 10% white chicks to 90% black chicks? Or man. Where's, where's your taste like? I've done, like, one one white chick, man, before, like. Just one white chick? Yeah, like, it hasn't been, uh, it hasn't been like that. Was it good? Man, it was so long ago, to be real with you, it must not have been, because I only. <laughs> he didn't go I back. I hardly remember. <laughs> if, a, if a guy who's a big rapper like you starts being seen with white chicks, though, couldn't it ruin your rep with your peeps? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know, man. You know, in the world today. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, man. I got a lot of white fans, so you know what I'm saying? I love the white people. Right, I so love you, the white people in this studio right now. You guys right. are great. Oh, man. thank you, Ludacris. Thank you. Thank Believe you. Well, Ludacris, thank you very much. Yeah, <laughs> man. <laughs> For sure. Number one album in the country, man. I just, you know. Look at you. Well, let me let me applaud that. <laughs> Top of the food yeah, chain. Man. Yeah. Over, yeah. Over 430,000 copies sold last week. They need to go find out why this yeah. is the number one album in the country right now. Right now. Are you referring to the album series. Chicken and Beer? Chicken and Beer, the third oh, album, yes. Chicken Featuring the single Stand Up? Yes. 
Available in stores now. At a special low price, man. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Look at you. What's this mean, stand up? Like, stand up for the man? Stand up to the man. Stand up when you hear the song because it makes you want to dance. Stand up for what you believe in. Stand up for your dreams. Whatever you want. Whatever. I like it. I want to stand up. Take it up here. I stand up for the man. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, as the man, I Rush, you are the man. Stand up. So... Hold on, I know a bunch of notes on you. I want to ask you a whole bunch of stuff here. I'd like to know what's going down. Yeah, man. As all right, here's what I got. You ready? Yeah. All right. First of all, you got discovered because you were a disc jockey at a radio station? Yeah, man. I've been rapping since I was nine years old. But... And you were cutting a promo at the radio station in, in sort of rap form, and some record dude heard it? Right, right. I mean, it's... To make a long story short, you know, I, I've been making demo tapes since I was, like, in my early teens. Right. Like I said, I was rapping since I was nine. Um, what really kind of boosted my, my career was working at this radio station where I was just trying to get one of my demo songs played, but right. I looked at it as a means to an end, just seeing how many producers and artists come up to a radio station all the time. Were you the guy on the air? Were you doing a radio show? At first, I wasn't, but since I was the youngest person up at this radio station, and it was a new hip-hop station, and the demographic was around where, my where age. Was this? Where was this, this station? Was in, in Atlanta, Georgia. In Atlanta? Yeah. You just walked in? You didn't even want to be a radio disc jockey, Hell and you nah. got a job. But, I mean, I went up there, you know, it was, it was consistency. I just kept going saying, you know, I, eventually that's what I wanted was a job because I wanted to make a place for right. myself up there, you know, try to infiltrate the system. Isn't it amazing how long I tried to get radio jobs and I actually and he, wanted one? Yeah, he didn't yeah. even want one. That always amazes me. Well, you got a real deep voice. I can see them wanting you on the radio. Yeah, man. What does a jacket like that cost you? That's a very expensive jacket, I feel. Man, I don't really pay much attention. I just you grab You got so stuff, much money, man. you just grab. <laughs> well, look at you. Did you grow up poor or something? Huh? Did you grow up poor? For the most part, hell yeah. So, like, now that we have things, it's all about cherishing these things. I, I like to have nice things. So, so so, your parents are pain in the ass? Are they looking to mooch some of that ludicrous money? Uh, no, man. I take care of my folks the same way they took care of me, man. Really? Hell yeah. And so, do you have a whole payroll that you have to, like, you know, you, yeah. have, to, you have to buy your parents a house and a car? And I don't thing? have to do anything, you know right. what I mean? But, I, you know, I do it because that's, that's the person that I am. Got to give back, for so, sure. They so got you, houses, they got cars, all that. Really? Them. Yeah. So, you got some overhead. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you got to get out on the road. Oh, definitely. We stay on the road. Yeah. So a jacket like that's got to be five grand, maybe. Two, mm. two Between two and five grand. What does it say on it? Pelly Pelly, yeah. Pelly, Pelly. Who yeah. is that? Who is that? It's the designer, man. Man, look at you. And that ring. Let the me see. The designer. What's that? I mean, is that fake or is that real? Hell no, it ain't fake, man. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> fake about me, man. Look at this. Well, Nothing fake about me. I mean, he's got about five rings on. Right. Right. Hold on a second. You got a, around your neck is a skull. Yeah. And what appears to be all diamonds. Right. Now, where do you get something like that? Where do you get? I get all my jewelry from uh, this place in Atlanta, Georgia, called the Apparel Mart on the sixth floor. All right. They must love when you walk in. Oh, and man. They, they they love me. They make all of my jewelry, man. I got more rings than your tub at home, man. I know. You see so, what I'm saying? So you say, when you when you walk in, say, look, I want a skull, a human skull made right. out of diamonds. Yeah. You're talking about, I mean, I don't know what these things cost, but I got to figure that that's a couple of hundred grand, isn't it? Nah. So, no, nah, it's not that much, but, you know, somewhere in the around the 100 grand area. Look at that thing. For sure. I've seen it, but. And he's wearing like a Super Bowl. That's a, a one of a Super kind. Bowl ring. But, yeah. you know, diamonds, man, you know, they certify. You can go back and get your money, man. Not really. If you wanted to. You know, you get 50%, maybe. Nah, nah, nah. They okay. keep their worth, man. The, the rings you're wearing are this bigger than Super Bowl rings, and they're big, <laughs> giant diamond rings. What What is something like, what is the most expensive piece of jewelry you have cost? The most expensive piece of jewelry really is probably the earrings in my ear, which are like five carats each. Let me see that. Yeah, look right. at the size of those rocks. <laughs> you ought to yeah, give those man. to a chick wow. one day. Those look are nice. <laughs> <laughs> Give them to a stick. Let me have that. Look at those right. earrings. Seriously, what's, what's, this, what's the earrings like that cost? Earrings like this somewhere in the range of maybe 60, 70 each. Something like <laughs> Jesus Christ. Christ. 60, 70. Would you ever say to yourself, maybe I should just save this money because you never know in a musical career, things can go horribly wrong. Do you ever say to yourself, <laughs> I'm going to save my money and invest it or something? That's I mean, why diamond, I, I have money invested. Otherwise, I wouldn't just go out and splurge like this. I got, you know, I diversify, man. I got money in all places. Are those insured? Those? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. certified, yeah. man. But that's the point. They keep their worth. If something was to go bad, I could take them and sell them. I got to figure you have about almost... Uh, 
at least a half a million dollars worth of jewelry right now on on your body. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. Somewhere around. Yeah. <laughs> Did you hear that downstairs on the street? <laughs> a half a million dollars. Aren't you scared of being jumped by your family or somebody? <laughs> I mean, man, you know, we walk around. <laughs> you know we walk I mean. around with, with, you know what I'm saying, with, with a person with me every now and then, man. Right. You have you to know, have a bodyguard. Sometimes when I wear this jewelry, I do. Other times, I don't have to wear it. You involved in any feuds? Uh, any kind of uh, uh, feuds with any uh, rappers? Bill O'Reilly, man. I have a feud with that man. I don't yeah. blame you. I um, I mean, I don't get that. You know, that's just a, a, a BS kind of thing, blaming music for, for what's people's... what's going on in the world, yeah. I, I hate when people do that. They try to do that with me. Right. Uh, I, I, I take offense to that. I take offense to Pepsi. Pepsi's a bunch of pussies anyway. I mean, all those soda <laughs> companies are. They're, 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 they're passing off all that crap as healthy. And uh, you were supposed to be the spokesperson for Pepsi. Is that right? Right, right. right. I the, was for a while. It was on the air, fact. wasn't it? Weren't the commercials the air? The commercials were on television, yeah. all of that. So Bill O'Reilly gets on his high horse, and he says what? Uh, Call you, for a rally. You know, A rally. Call for a boycott. Basically. And Pepsi freaks out. Nobody's going to boycott anything <laughs> based on what Bill O'Reilly says. Right, but just for the simple fact that he said it on his television show, you know, they, they started feeling the pressure, dropped me from the company. Pepsi the, pay you? They pay, oh, yeah, yeah, I definitely got paid out of my contract. Right. But at the same time... How much money you know, are we talking, like a million? Somewhere in that range. Get like, the hell out of here. Like ten necklaces? <laughs> a million. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, I know what you mean. Yeah, man. That's Basically... Right. Just for doing one commercial? Just for doing one. But the problem with that is they should have... They, they knew who I was before they signed me to the contract. Right. So for the simple fact that this man got on, on television and what's, said it uh, and then... What's O'Reilly's objection to you? What, do you say the word hoe? Is that the problem? I have no idea, man. You tell me. You talking about banging I, chicks and I feel uh, like he, chicks? I feel like he's a racist. I feel like he's a hypocrite. Just like, you know, you, you guys were talking about how they uh, Pepsi hired the Osbournes right. after they hired me. I mean, I'm just as big as Os Osborne fan as anybody in the world. Yeah, but. Ozzy's had his share of drugs. Right. Ozzy's had his share of cheating <laughs> on his wife. His Ozzy's share of cursing in his own home. And here, here this is me. On, on record, you know, chicken and beer, number one album in stores right now. Go get it at a special low price. Saying things on a record. Right. And they're in their own home doing these things, but yeah. yet I'm the one that gets dropped. Did you ever say to Bill O'Reilly, Bill O'Reilly tells me he has to go around with bodyguards because people always threaten to kill him. Uh, is he afraid of you? Is that the problem? Does he think Ludacris will come after him? Man, you know, I don't know what to think, but you always expect the unexpected. You did know you what I mean? I tried to. Did you write a song about him on you Chicken You know what? And I beer? did. I have two references to him on Chicken and Beer, which is why people need to go get it. Number one album in the country. What do you special low price? <laughs> at a special say? low price. Uh, yeah. That's why we used to play the song that you got, man. It's called Blow It Out Your Ass. Blow It Out it's Your Ass. It's great, man. I, I, like I handled it. Now, wait a minute. What is, the, <laughs> what is the subtle message in Blow It Out Your Ass? <laughs> the subtle message? I have uh, two messages, Here man. Here some Blow It Out Your Ass, baby. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, it's on the second yeah. verse. Let's go. Pelly, Pelly. JJ, you're on the air. What's up, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What up, my nigga? Hey, now wait a second. You can't oh, I was say, about to say, I didn't know we could do it like that. Yeah, I, uh, white guys can't say my nigga, right? I right. Mean, uh, uh, can Eminem oh. say my nigga? He does, doesn't he? <laughs> no, he never says my nigga. Really? I don't think so. Hell no. So. Well, I've, I've talked to him on the phone and he said it. I've he seen some white you, guys right? walk up to black guys and go, what's happening to my nigga? And they get their ass kicked. Yeah, yeah, that's that's where was I the other day and there were a bunch of white kids sitting in a booth and they were my niggaing each other? White, white kids? kids? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel wrote me a note and said uh, he signed it uh, fondly, your nigger, <laughs> uh, Jimmy. But, uh, you know, that's all right. I guess. Right. I guess. I don't yeah. know. But I, I looked up because I have here the nigger word and I looked up as a bunch of white kids going, nigger, yeah, my nigger. Blah, blah. Yeah, I like, <laughs> right. Oh, I hope you scolded them. <laughs> Damn, we can say nigger like that on this? Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, this show, yeah, sure. Nigger. What don't say you? nigger. Yeah. The, nigger. That's, that's right. That's right. Right. Daniel yeah. Daniel. Yeah. Yeah. right. Then you have a fight on your hand. <laughs> right. You, if right. you want to say guinea, you could say that too. Little yeah. It's an open show. Kikey Kikeman's allowed also. Yes. And there you have it. Just a question, my nigger. Uh, how come you rap guys' careers don't be lasting too long? You know what's up with that? All right, you're sounding uh, you're you sounding sound a little really crazy. Stupid, yeah, it? but yeah, uh, it's racist. <laughs> what about that? A lot of rap guys come and go. How do you stay on top? How do you stay current? I stay on top, man. It's consistency, you know. And in the world of today, there's a lot of competition out there. If you don't stay in the fans' faces, they're gonna forget about you. Stay focused. You know, they recycle people in this industry. You know, one goes and some more come. Who the so top it's about guys? your business, man. It's about your business. Doesn't it bother you that Eminem is one of the top guys? Seriously. Oh nah, man. Yeah, Eminem right is that? like breaking up, breaking the hip hop world open completely. You like that? Hell yeah, you're definitely. Right with that. I'm Remember definitely Young okay MC? With it. I knew Young MC. 
And I remember Young MC. He got recycled. You and I are the only two people who remember him. <laughs> right. What happened to that guy? He was good. Hey, man. He's to a each his own, man. I have no idea what happened to that man. But I can tell you this, man. I'm a businessman first. And if you don't have your business right in this industry, that's definitely one of the ways that you won't last. So we, so here's the height of hypocrisy. You, you uh, get dumped by Pepsi. O'Reilly calls for a boycott right. of Pepsi, so they dump you. And then you, I guess, I don't know who called for the boy. Maybe Jesse Jackson even said, hey, let's boycott uh, Pepsi because they dumped Ludacris. Right. And then they paid you off, paid off your charity. They paid off my charity. I have something called the Ludacris Foundation, which helps kids help themselves. Of course, like a lot of different projects from, you know, sponsoring Boys and Girls Club, getting uh, uniforms for kids, going so what, to they, they donated, rehabilitative like, centers. They donated a certain amount of money. Five million? No, nah, no, nah, nah, not that much. Oh. But I mean, they donated they donated a certain amount of money, you know, each year for my foundation, which was a very, very good thing. You got any good stories like getting shot nine times, like uh, fifty? <laughs> no, I don't have any <laughs> any getting shot stories. <laughs> Did you ever go to jail? Did I ever go to jail? Yeah. Yeah, I've been to jail. All before. right, <laughs> all right. Yeah. But you know what? I do have a I do have a good story for you, man. Which is a crazy story. I think um, I'm, I'm on the fight? first tour. Wait a second. Have you ever had a knife fight? <laughs> knife fight? I haven't been in a knife fight yet. Carry a gun? Yeah, I carry guns for sure. You do? You know, in, uh, in the yeah, state of Georgia, yeah, man, yeah, it's yeah, legal. Yeah. We can yeah. take our guns oh, anywhere. Yeah? What do you got? You can Desert Eagle, man. I got the twin Glock 40s. You know, Really? Put, Look at you. I rap about it. It's reality, man. Uh, Listen to the album. Chicken and Beer. In stores now. I'm just now. asking uh, a legal question. You can conceal... Legally? Yeah. Yep. Really? In Georgia. You can have it in your car. You know what I'm saying? You can, yes, you can do wow. it. Wow. What do you carry in your car? What do I carry? Both my guns, man. What guns? Like I said, I have the twin Glock 40s. Matter of fact, the Desert Eagle is kind of, it's, it's a little too big for the car, so I keep that at the desert crib. Eagle. What's a Desert Eagle? The, one of the biggest handguns you can buy. It's like a bazooka. I'll tell you <laughs> what. Sure. I'll tell you what. I got a grenade on me right now. <laughs> oh, well, I'll pull the pin. Well, let it out. Though. That's right. <laughs> you Let's don't even do know it. what happened. You, you talking about some farting or something. I know how you do. Yeah. Fart man. <laughs> Fart man. That's the grenade you got. But let me tell you about this story real quick, man. So, you know, I think we were in North Carolina somewhere, and, you know, we visited a lot of strip clubs. Yeah. You know, I yeah, know they sent yeah. you the the, <laughs> the pee popping video. I don't know if you're taking a look at it. They can check it out on ludicrous.net if they haven't. You know, this right. is the X-rated video. But we went to a strip club in North Carolina one time. We were on my tour bus, and so there was a woman that came out and greeted us. She was obviously the owner of this strip club, so she took us into the strip club. And come to find out, she had daughters in there stripping. Oh man, that's so sick. Then when we left, the the owner, the woman. Tried to come on our tour bus, and she started a strip for us. But we had to kick her off. You had the oh. mother and the daughter strip. Yes, it was the family strip business. That's wow. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You believe it. Were they hot? It was I. All right. It was I. Yeah, it was one of those little rent strip clubs. Yeah. I hear you. For sure. So what did you go you know, to jail for? The family for? angle keeps the money coming in. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, man. This yeah, was I'd, back in the days when I'd I was a juvenile. I'd go see that. Yeah, what, what, so what did you go to jail <laughs> for? Back in the days when I was a juvenile, man. Something I don't really like to talk about, you know. Oh, come on, talk man. This can help your street credibility. Hey, man. Yeah, yeah, forget yeah. that, man. That's the <laughs> yeah, come on, man. We can move on to the next thing, man. I'm just trying to help you with your street credibility. Hey, man, I got street credibility. I don't have to. You kick a brother's ass? Is that what happened? No, that's not what I went to jail for. But I can kick a brother's ass. You know, kick the right it, circumstances. You kick a chick's ass. Sure. Was it shoplifting? No, nah, I don't put my hands on. The, I don't put my hands on the women, man. What about shoplifting? I've done that before too, but that was back in the days, man. <laughs> I've tried that. Prank phone you call? Have? Did you go to jail for prank phone call? No, nah, I didn't do that. <laughs> no, I didn't go to jail for that. Oh, yeah, I've shoplifted, sure. When I was a kid, I tried it. What did you? What did you I try was to do? Would you boost? I, I got a uh, tie tack. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it was? I had a bunch of friends, and we would, and they'd say, "You have to if you want to be with us." You have to go to a store now and steal something. Uh -huh. Oh, so, so you were getting like, initiated. I was getting initiated. Basically. And I grew up in a screwed up place. So I go and I figured, oh man, I'm shaking like leaf. I don't even want anything. <laughs> so I go into Macy's at Roosevelt Field. Oh boy. And uh, I see the tie tacks are at least on a table where you could walk by and possibly it's not swipe like on. at the counter. Yeah. So I walked by, I threw a tie tack in my. <laughs> Nice. Okay. Something you could really use. I had friends who were stealing record albums, the big record albums, yeah. sticking them on that guy, sticking them under their coat and everything. That's crazy, man. You know what you can crazy. get for a tie tack on the black market? A lot of money. Oh, that was the ugliest. Who yeah. wore a tie? I don't even know yeah. what I was going to do with it. No it was a need. big waste of time. Right. But did you get a chance to check out the X-rated strip club video? They sent it to you. If you haven't oh, seen I'll, it, I'll look at that. You got to do that, man. Oh, I'm going to look at it. I think Believe me, anything it. with naked chicks, I'll watch. Right. <clears throat> Speaking of which, how you doing with the poontang? What's going on now? 
Man, you know. You I'm limited just, to one, or are you just playing the field? I'm just playing the field right now, man. What can yeah. I What say? happened? Did you have a, did you lose a girl in the, the rush to fame, or? Did I lose a girl? <laughs> like I said, man, I've just been playing the field, basically. You got any shorties? Any shorties? I ha yeah, I have a young, a young daughter. Oh, that's nice. Oh, yeah? Beautiful, yes. No kidding. For sure. That's cool, Dating man. Dating any famous women? Yeah, I yeah. have before. Oh, man. yeah, who'd you get? Yeah, Vivica man, A. Fox? Yeah. Come on. Oh, yeah. Kidman? Come on, my Out of respect for that person, man. We oh, oh man. Come on. We gotta do it. Man. What's the matter with you? Come on. What are you talking about? Let it out, man. Come on. Nah. <laughs> Queen Latifah. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> she ain't looking for you. Daryl Hannah? <laughs> Come on, man. Tell me who it was. What happened? Do it, man. You got a real famous chick, Beyonce Knowles. Respectful. Come on. Keep Is she an actress or a singer? Hey man, y'all not gonna get it out Come of on, Lola man. Falana. Lola Falana. Star Jones. Nah. Star Jones. Hell no. Nah. We're known to Judd. Come on, who is it? Y'all not gonna guess Come it, on, man. man. If you Leslie did, Ann Warren. Nah, nah, nah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jim, go ahead. You're on with Ludacris, the album Chicken and Beer, featuring the single Stand Up, is available in stores now. It's the number one album in the country. Find That's out why. Feel good. Find out why. Find out what this man is talking about. Please do. Yes, Jim. Yes, uh, I'd like you to play uh, my nigga. Show him how you rap. Oh, ah. would you? I would be honored if you would listen to my song. Go ahead. Oh, kick it off, man. Yeah, this I is called My Niggas. It's right. uh, inspired. You going to find it? Oh, you got to go looking for it. It's the, you oh, you recorded it already. Yeah, yeah, I record. I'm not going to rap live. I never do that. <laughs> I never gotta do that. Got to play it. All right, let's go to Jason in the meantime while we're looking for that. Go ahead, Jason. Yeah, it's Howard. Uh... I was just calling about the Bill O'Reilly thing. O'Reilly yeah. called, or O'Reilly went on the air and tried to get Ludacris um, taken off the, the Pepsi endorsement thing. And meanwhile, O'Reilly wrote a book, uh, a murder mystery, that contained six murders and numerous sex scenes. And his, his argument that Ludacris shouldn't endorse Pepsi is that he thinks about sex and murder. Yeah, well, what's the difference between singing about sex and murder? He's writing about it, showing it in a movie. There's, there's no uh, difference. Um, Singing about murder or sex and this and that doesn't make people murder. It just doesn't. There's no statistic they were anywhere. They it long before rap. See, that's yeah. my problem. It was always here. Nazi Germany, they murdered more people than ever on this planet, and there was no Hitler rap music. never heard of rap. Yeah. There were no violent movies, and there was no Howard Stern radio show. So. They're trying to point the finger, man. You know, Bill O'Reilly is one of the people that's saying hip-hop is going to be dead in 10 years, so. Well, I don't think that's the case. Prove him wrong. Kelly, you're on the air. Yes, Kelly. Come on, baby. God damn it. Other <laughs> shows go so smoothly. And our show gets so hosed up. Bunch of crap. Makes me sick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to Bobby. Let's try him. Bobby, you're on the air. Yeah, uh, first off, I love your stuff. I think you're down to earth and you're fun. Thank you, but man. But I want to know if you're going to be one of those rappers that tell your rap kit career to move and get out the way and then uh you know go to movies and just totally ruin everything like you shouldn't what about that right. you're gonna be doing some movies, do and, movies and, 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 and oh, i was there too it. fast too furious as a matter of fact right you know it's it grossed over like 140 million so is that the move though get out of uh, rap and get into the movies as quick as you can no nah, i mean i see i've seen some artists do that but my whole thing is music is still my number one love you know and even after doing that movie i put all like I mean, I put all movie stuff on hold right now just because I feel like this Chicken and Beer album is the best one. Oh, so I always far, like so the names of your records. Your your record, Incognito. Right, right. Fantastic. <laughs> nice, Thank you, man. Nice. That, yeah. was the, that was the independent album. Chicken yes. and Beer, I, you know, I named it that because you are what you eat. So That's yeah. right. You know, okay, Kelly, go ahead. You're on the air. Hi, I just wanted to say I'm one of the white girls that Ludacris had sex with. Oh, you said one of them. I only said, said one. He see? said he only had so one. I, you so must you have been the only one, one, huh? Well, I am the one. Did he perform oral on you? I don't want to go that uh, way. Where uh, did you meet Ludacris if you claim to have made love to him? At a party. Really? I don't even go out. <laughs> <laughs> it must have been one of my parties because that's the only party uh, I go to. I saw Ludacris's twin Glocks. <laughs> <laughs> cool. uh, I saw a little more than that. Uh, you sound a little bit like a guy. Do I? Do I? Ago was it that you had Ludacris? I just want to say that I'm the white woman that had sex with Ludacris. Hey. So what's the deal? You have no girlfriend now? What's your what's your what's your story? What's going on? Come Not on. Not right now, man. I'm I'm just. Are you what one happened? of those guys who hides your women like Snoop? Nobody knows. Man, I don't feel like I have to hide anything. <laughs> I'm right. just letting you know right now. I'm saying. So what do you do? Like you just 
meet meet someone at one of the concerts and bang them for the night and then move on you to know the next man one. back in the day you know i, I kind of used to be like that to be real with you when you first get on the road you know yeah you know uh, us negroes we have to go through that stage male every man yeah, i mean you know, i think the white guys are doing that too you yeah, yeah man but well, we're like negro it. too yeah i've really calmed <laughs> yeah. down man i've really you know what i'm saying i really stay focused recently i'm focused man so let me play a little bit of my rap music. Let's kick I'm it off, man. I need to hear this. I dragged my lanky ass into this radio station to break balls with my niggas. Lanky ass nigga. Don't criticize my niggas, cause they's my niggas. They be your niggas. Papa Boo is my very own lazy big ass nigga. I love him. I love that homo Ralph who cleans my underwear. That is one good This is nigga. hardcore. This is ingenious. He is a right cleaning here. mother nigga. Homo. Radio niggas, that's what we're talking about here, you mother f skank. Yeah, I love my radio in. niggas. Niggers. They're my niggas. My niggas. I said Jackie always has too much to drink. My niggas. Then he come into the show and he stinks. My niggas. He probably should see us shrink. My niggas. Damn plugs. My niggas. On drugs. My niggas. Gary's got a big wide droopy ass. My niggas. Then he smiles and looks like a jackass. My niggas. Or a beaver hiding out in the grass. My niggas. Big slob. My niggas. Big blob. My niggas. God Salem, he's so dull and he's bald. My that's my, that's my. <laughs> Genius, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You should come out with an album, yeah. man. Maybe you too could be the number one album in that's the That's how I man. lost my Coca Cola endorsement with oh, that. Well, real. that yeah. song's a little real. offensive. You said homo in it. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen to me. <laughs> I like meeting Ludacris. Seemed like a good guy. Man, I'm sorry you, you lost man. your Pepsi endorsement. What can hey, I man. Tell you? It was the best thing that could have ever happened to me in life, man. Right. Believe well. it. I learned a lot from it. I'm a better person. We have to get more endorsements, you know. Yeah, it'll happen. everything. It's I, ho I hope it happens for you. Good luck with your movie career. Uh, chicken and beer. You don't need any help with that. That man. seems to be going well. You you helped me out enough just by letting me be on this show, man. There I need to let go, all y'all know I'm a fan, and well, I definitely thank you. appreciate you having a Negro here. Man. Well, thank you, oh. Ludacris. Even well, though you're saying good. niggas all over the place, but it's Well, okay. you got to say that. At least that's you didn't a... say, yeah, with the ER. No, so hell no. Hell no. I'm not that never way. That, Look that. at me, man. I'm the great white hope. You For crazy? Sure. For sure. <laughs> yeah, I know better than to say that. I want to get my ass kicked by a brother. <laughs> by saying it, we're pointing out how wrong it is. Exactly. Right. All right, here's the test. OJ, innocent or guilty? Go ahead. OJ, innocent, man. Your true brother. He's innocent, man. Stop it. He is innocent. Stop you know man. it. All right. What? You know he's innocent. Interview <laughs> over. Interview <laughs> over. That's it. I'm leaving. Uh, <laughs> I'm not even he was found not guilty. He's yeah. innocent. <laughs> All right. Let's, here's, here's one. Kobe. Innocent or guilty? Innocent, man. Innocent. Wow. The sniper in Maryland. Guilty, guilty, guilty. guilty, guilty, okay, guilty. Good, so By the way, your birthday is uh, September 11th. Yeah, man, really? that's a hard birthday oh. to have, man. Ruins your birthday for you. You know what? It really doesn't ruin my birthday because, you know, Virgos, we celebrate the whole month of September. So, you know, even right. if I don't celebrate on that one day, uh -huh. I'm good, man. We celebrate the whole month. All right, there you go. So we good. There we are. Ludicrous chicken and beer. Get it. We'll be back right after these words. Or in... Good Lord. Anyway, let me tell you about a place uh, called Smooth Synergy. Uh, they offer laser hair removal, the most effective... Uh, <sighs> yes, the most effective form of permanent hair reduction. Smooth Synergy has medical doctors on staff, is conveniently located at 686 Lex, Lexington Avenue between 56th and 57th Street. They have flexible hours... Uh, and they're even open on weekends. Most of all, every appointment is private, professional, and you should not have to wait. Smooth Synergy also offers other cosmetic treatments from cellulite reduction to Botox, collagen, facials, microdermabrasion, and more. Call anytime, 212-397-0111. And schedule a free consultation. Tell them K-Rock sent you, and you'll receive 10% off your treatment. Do it. Don't wait. Call Smooth Synergy today, 212-397-0111. And synergize your mind and body parts. Everybody's doing it. You can also check them out on the web at smoothsynergy.com. New York's new music alternative. 92.3 K-Rock. <laughs> You're listening to best-selling author, Howard Stern. Yeah. Tonight on E, win a date with Sunset Thomas. See three guys vie for a date with this very tight, hot porn star. Plus, bonus footage of the winner on his sexy date tonight at 11 o'clock. On E, the mighty E. 
I got a bunch of stuff here, tapes and things we just haven't even gotten to. Maybe I should just play some of them. This is the, uh, this is just funny. This is the how ridiculous professional sports gets in this country. This is the brother of the guy who interfered sort of with the ball and the other night in Chicago. He had to read a statement. He had to actually read a statement his from brother, his brother. I mean, the actual guy was even, af I guess, afraid to come out, so he let his brother come out and read it, yeah. this apology. He's in hiding. Wow. There are a few words to describe how awful I feel uh, and what I have experienced within these last 24 hours. I've been a Move to Florida. They love you there. Cub fan all my life and fully understand the relationship between my actions and the outcome of the game. To Moises Alou, the Chicago Cubs organization, Ron Santo, Ernie Banks, and Cub fans everywhere, I am so truly sorry from the bottom of this Cub fan's broken heart. Oh. I would have written a letter that said, you know what? You guys are out of your minds. Uh, number one, yeah, okay, I tried to catch a ball. So what? What about the nine million other attempts you had to close the game and win? And you'd be hounded out of the city. All right. You know what? F you, you're lunatics. Leave me alone. <laughs> the Cubs manager, Dusty Baker, who I think is a brilliant baseball guy, after the game did a did a, something that wasn't that classy. He said, he didn't say, hey, look, it's a fan being a fan and everything. He really put blame on the guy. I mm. actually have that, too, in the computer where oh, he oh, says, I don't even understand... What, how you know? I can't understand why a fan would do that. Well, I mean, are you he, kidding? The, the, the ball comes your way. You try to get it. It's a natural response. Stop it. I and mean, you know what? Uh, th there was op plenty of opportunities to win the game for the Chicago Cubs. Right. It was their job to win the game. Yeah. And it's a heartbreaker for any Chicago fan. We know that. But stop beating up on this dude. It's so silly. The guy didn't cause a run. Right. You got that in, in the computer? Yeah. I, I don't have my numbers in front of me. Do you hmm. have the... You can pull the computer up. What's the dude's name? Dusty Baker. Oh, yeah, I got it right here. I don't need to get anything. Our guys uh, battled and fought and played played hard and well all year long. Is it disappointing? Yeah, it's disappointing. Well, hold on. Sometimes you got to look back and say, hey, you know, at the end, you know, right. they, I've never understood that. This is and I probably never will. I don't know if it's a natural reaction to try to catch the ball, but if you're for your team, you got to, like, let, you know, give your player every opportunity and chance to catch that ball. All right, so there were plenty other... <laughs> but say the Cubs that, made an error right after that ball, and that ball was a foul ball anyway. So. Right. No, the Cubs you blew know. it. But saying yeah. that just fans the fire on this kid. Yeah, yeah it makes it like he's responsible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's going on. Let me let me just get to some of these other tapes real quick. Uh, by the way, um, comedian Patrice O'Neill is coming in for the news. You remember him? He's oh. the guy. Oh, who, the guy who goes to Brazil all the time. Yeah, to get laid. They yeah, sell he's a great the dream. Guy. Sell the dream, brother. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's great. This he, guy's really funny. He's You'll hilarious. Love he's just a funny dude. He'll be in in just a second. I played you the Clay Aiken tapes. I didn't play all of them, but I don't know if you care. I I want to listen to Clay. You do? Yeah. See what he has to say on what was this on prime time? Yeah, hey, I'm also looking for that. I'm also looking for that tape. Here's a whole bunch of Bob Levy roasts. Oh, he's he's he roasting lately. John Stamos. Oh. Howard Stern. A whole bunch of those. And then and then there was some other tapes I'm looking for, too. Where's the uh, tape of um, the other night? Gary Garver went out. It should be right in front of Howard. I, uh, I hate to tell you, but... It isn't right in front of you? Right, uh, <laughs> it's not there. I think it's right in front of you. Uh, you see him? Was it right in front of me? No. No, no. <laughs> I bet they're right in front of you. <laughs> I have a feeling they are. No, they're not. I huh? to you this point. All right, then forget it. I don't care. Not that. Not that important. I just want to get some of the tape out of the way. <laughs> All right, it's not here. Forget it. That's it. Yeah, Gary Garber. They're over here. I didn't put them you didn't put them there. Right. Wonder who put him there. You put him there. Okay. All right. His breath is a little bit bad. Oh dear. He just caught a whiff. <laughs> but he's been working on it. He's working on it. <laughs> All right. Gary Garver with uh, Mike Farrell is the funniest one. Oh yeah. This is really good. Mike Farrell is the guy who was on Mash. Who Remember ruined Mash. The guy who ruined Mash essentially. Yeah. <laughs> Remember the guy. Remember when Mash started out? It was really good because they had that guy. Wayne Rogers. Rogers, and then he split for some unknown reason. 
Mike Farrell is to MASH fans what that kid in the stands is to Cub fans. So Mike Farrell was hired as B.J. Honeycutt, and he kind of sucked. Yeah, he was all good and nice. Yeah, yeah just ruined it. And he's humorless. Listen to him with Gary Garber. I mean, the guy has no fun. How you doing? Good. Good. Uh, who, who, who are you? I'm with Infinity Broadcasting. With who? Infinity Broadcasting. Oh, I know we're with Infinity Broadcasting. We're, we're, you know, we work like Viacom, you know, we own all these, you know, Paramount. You know, okay. <laughs> I'm just part of the, the small fray there. Hey, what do, you, what do you think of, I know you're a big Democrat. What do you think of Arnold Schwarzenegger being governor? I think it's too bad. Um, I think it's a triumph of celebrity over sense. And I think that it's, uh, you know, it remains to be seen. He may be a good governor. I hope so. Uh, but I think that uh, this is... Uh, I think the recall was inappropriate, and I think it's uh, actually a defeat for democracy. Uh, do you think that the quality of shows suck on television now because all the money goes to the actor and less money goes to production values? I don't think all the money goes to the actors. I think a lot of shows aren't very good on television today, but I think it has more to do with the fact that it's a ratings chase than it has to do with where the money goes. What was your initial reaction to the Kobe Bryant arrest? <clears throat> Sadness. Um... Have you ever done a black chick? Are you, uh, are you from this that asshole show? Uh, um, Howard Stern. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> couldn't he let him think up the name himself? <laughs> no, not Howard he Stern. He knew exactly who he was talking about. Oh, you mean Howard? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I work with him. Yeah. Well, you, you don't like Howard? I don't. I don't like being ambushed and being asked stupid questions and and being put in a position where I'm going to be uh, asked to say things that might be turned into a way to make me look foolish on the radio or on television. I think that's really hard. Do you think I try to make you look foolish? I think that's what you're trying to do, yeah. I'm not trying to make you. I'm just asking stupid questions. Well, asking stupid questions is a way to try to make somebody look foolish. But, but I mean, you, you know, you, you're, you played in MASH. I mean, you, you guys were funny then. I mean, you, it was my favorite show. Why you, why, you all, why you get pissed off? I mean, it's just a joke. Don't you think it's just a joke? It's just media. If you were to come up to me and say, look, I'd like to do a, a joke interview with you and say and ask you a bunch of dumb questions and see what you want to say to them, then I'd, I'd be doing it straight up. This is not doing it straight up. But if I asked, if I said I was with the Howard Stern Show, would you do the interview with me? No, I wouldn't. Probably wouldn't. So how can I, how can I do that if you're not going to do the interview? Can't. Doing the Howard Stern Show is not a way to get an interview with me. All right. Thanks a lot, Mr. Farrell. I seem to recall him coming on our show once at NBC. Am I crazy? No, he did. He did, he right? He did. He did. I guess I didn't impress him. <laughs> now, Gary reminded me the the comment that that may actually made him laugh was you said to him, "I'll bet the person who booked you on here will probably be fired," <laughs> and he actually laughed with you at that point. I that see. was the only time he laughed. <laughs> I see. Well, he's so he, you know. Listen, I mean, he's got to be a bitter guy. He ruined Mash. <laughs> you know. Uh, here's Gary Garber with Rob Reiner, who played Meathead on Does All he in have the a Family. Sense of humor? Does he have a sense of humor? I don't remember. How you doing? Good, how are you? Big fan of yours from uh, All in the Family and all those things, Thank you. Um, I'm sorry. If you weren't in show business, do you think that you could uh, make a living at doing anything else? Uh, no. I don't know. What is this? Who am I talking to? <laughs> do you, do you, who, who are you talking to? Infinity Broadcast. Who are, huh? Infinity Broadcast. Oh, Infinity Broadcasting. What is Infinity Broadcasting? It's, we're, uh, you know, Viacom, Infinity. Oh, okay. Infinity. Those radio stations. All right, okay. Yeah. Good. Uh, do you think the uh, charges against Kobe Bryant are racially motivated at all? No, I, I don't really, I'm not really qualified to talk about this stuff. Okay, do you, do you, did you, how do you feel about uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger being governor of California? Well, he's, uh, you know, he was duly elected, and he, uh, he certainly got uh, the support of everybody. I'm going to try to give him as much support as I can. I'm a good friend of Arnold's, and, and I think he'll, he'll hopefully do a great job. Ever paid for sex? Oh, oh. Huh? Oh, no, I don't. What do you think of Howard Stern? What, what, no, I, I, this is—I'm not doing this conversation. I don't—I don't want to have a conversation with you. You don't sound like a person who's in a real media to me. Oh, thanks. <laughs> 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 that did not go well. <laughs> yeah. Well, it is the real media. It doesn't sound like a person who's in the real media. No. I love how Mike Farrell goes. If you tell me it's a joke interview, then it'll be funny. Oh. No, it won't. Yeah. Like, what are you? Well, he doesn't know. Yeah. Mr. Sense of Humor. Uh, here's Gary Garber with the Reverend Jesse Jackson. Mm. All right, that's a big, that's a big score, a big coup for him. Reverend Jackson, how you doing? How are you? Happy birthday. Thank you, sir. How, how, how old are you? Six to two. You look great. Yeah, I feel great too. Uh, do you think? 
Thank you, buddy. I know, I, I, I know your road schedule has been crazy. Yeah, road crazy. Thanks for the we can do. Well, let's talk to you. Can I, I'd like to share with Pompous ass is blowing him off right there in the interview. <laughs> kind, of, kind of where we are. All right. Okay. Don't, don't just one second. Yes, sir. Do you think Arnold Schwarzenegger will make a good governor in California? Well, I hope he will. The people of the state deserve stability. Um, this recall was really a destabilizing act, and I hope that the threshold will be raised so as to discourage this kind of activity in the future. Uh, in many ways, the recall was a retaliation by the losers of the election of a year ago. And there's nothing to stop another retaliation, but it should not happen. We should raise the threshold so that we can have an orderly two-year, four-year, six-year election cycle. He's got verbal diarrhea. <laughs> that has served us well. Does the public know the real Jesse Jackson? They know what they see, a lot they don't see. What they know is that for 40 years, I've really worked uh, very much in the public eye, fighting for social justice, whether working with Dr. King or Whitney Young or Rob Wilkins or Nelson Mandela or Cesar Chavez or Nelson Mandela. Across these years, I've simply given my best to make America better and the world more secure. When, uh, when you die, will Christ be in your thoughts? Christ is in my DNA. <laughs> Have you ever sneezed and farted at the same time? It sounds silly to me. Thanks a lot, Reverend. Sounds silly to me. Christ is in his <laughs> DNA. <laughs> Man. Uh, I never know what he's talking about. Nelson Mandela, Cesar Chavez, or Nelson Mandela? He uh, likes Nelson Mandela. Yeah. He said N Nelson Mandela twice. Yeah, Nelson Mandela, or Cesar Chavez, or Nelson Mandela. <laughs> Dr. King. Dr. King. <laughs> uh, Christ is in my sneezes and faults. <laughs> Christ is in my DNA. Hey, uh, I just want to compliment Stuff Magazine. Their cover of Carmen Electra is very, uh, very beautiful. It looks like, to me... You know, Carmen's in a bra. It looks like she went and made her boobs even bigger. Really? Yeah. I, I don't necessarily I she approve of that. okay. Yeah, she's fine. I, don't, I feel like women, as they start to get older, feel like they got to make, you know... The boobs bigger? Yeah. What do you, what do you figure Let Carmen is that. now? 34-ish? Yeah. I don't know, but look. I mean, they're definitely bigger, right? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Wow. Right? Unless they... Oh, oh, unless wow. they're pushing them up or something. Yeah. Wow. She's pushing them up. I'm pushing them up. I'm taking them down. Carmen Electra is pushing them up. I'm pushing them up. <laughs> Let me see. She looks like she did something different to her face, too. Like oh, she had, no. I don't know. But no, she looks good. Don't get me wrong. I mean. But I hope she doesn't start getting insecure. Yeah. She should just leave things alone. Looks like the boobs were made a little bigger. I got to check that out. Wow. She wants to be naked so bad, too, in this magazine because she's got her top off and she's got her hands over her nips. But she's been naked, right? Yeah. Oh God, she's in like eight Playboys. Mm -hmm. Really? Look at the look at the size of these jugs. Let me see. Oh, good yeah. God. Oh God. Oh God. She's hot though. Oh, she's in the top ten hottest chicks ever, man. But you know, yesterday we were talking about the sal the saline and the um, silicone. Yeah. It seems to me that everybody now, because I was at, when I was at the tennis uh, tournament. Lots of young girls look like they have two cantaloupes on their chest. Yeah. Because but those are actual cantaloupes. Oh. Some people are sewing cantaloupes to their chest. <laughs> right, it's a new thing. Uh, Pam Anderson. Big things in these stretched out tops. Pam Anderson is also, there's a great picture of her in this really awesome bathing suit. And she's coming in tomorrow. I can't wait to see her. I think she's so hot. I'm going to rub her legs if she'll let me. I'm going to ask her if I can rub them. You did that once, didn't you? Yeah, I want to do it again. How easy is it going to be to get out of bed tomorrow? Man? Oh, yeah. Gina Gershon, too, is very hot. Not I didn't realize now. she's 40. Hey, now. So Gina's there's 40. a 40-year-old you do. Hey I now. would do Gina, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gina Gershon. <laughs> yeah. She's one of the lucky <laughs> ones. She's, she's still holding up and yeah. can have you. Also America's Smartest Stripper tomorrow. Also, I want to compliment uh, Maxim Magazine for putting Jessica Alba on the... F I, I love these magazines. I like these magazines. Ooh, Maxim put Jessica Alba on? Yeah, on the cover, and she's in a little bathing suit. You know, and it's like, it's really great to see famous chicks. Okay, they're not naked, and, you know, they're too good to be naked, but um, it's just nice to see them in bathing suits and stuff, and their boobies, and, and like, trying to be all sexy. And this has um, eaten into the profits of Penthouse and Playboy, yeah, hasn't it? Yeah, because it's sexy. 
Jessica Alba's got a bit of a belly, though. She, she, she's what a young girl. She's like 22. She really ought to work on that. Bit of a belly? Really? Yeah. I mean, I, come on. Look at that. You I can was see talking it. about Let's see it right there. Come on. Let's be honest. Oh, you can tell <laughs> but dude. <laughs> no, no, no. It's nice. Don't get me wrong, about. but I'm saying that can go horribly wrong. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Man, you can see it. Oh, you, my You can see it right there. <laughs> Oh, you're Robin's crazy. like, hey, hey! If I if my whole job is to be a hot chick, right? What uh, do you want? Ripples? You you can't take that, huh? No, no, no. I like it. Don't get me wrong. I bang her and everything else, but there is a belly, and they do a lot of airbrushing. I can tell what's going uh, on. You think I they uh, had the helper? Yeah. Oh, I bet your mother's little helper was used there. <laughs> I went to the movies a couple weeks ago, and they showed a trailer of a flick she's she's got coming out. Looked oh, yeah? like looked like the worst movie ever, but no. I, I couldn't take my eyes off of her. Man. Hey, Jessica, throw up three times. You'll be fine. <laughs> Hey, that finger down she's, come on, baby. She's hot. It's time. I don't find her hot. Really? Oh, yeah. she's beautiful. What's wrong with you? Yeah, I, she's, I, she's beautiful, but she's not hot. I disagree. I think she's smoking. Hmm. She's what, all right. what, who is hot, then? Let me hear Who's hot? Who's Pam hot. Anderson. Well, yeah. Pam Anderson is hot. Hot. Uh, Carmen, Carmen Electra is hot. Is hot. Who else? Who, who, I'll who tell you, you Uma new, Thurman is hot. But who in the new group of girls is hot? Like in Jessica's age group. Britney Spears has gotten hot. I never used to think so, but she's so all of a sudden, she's got it. I don't know what it is, but she's got it. She's hot. What about the, hot. the broad from uh, that WB show? Uh, what WB I'm show? I'm sorry. Uh, Superman? No. No, Jessica Biel. No. No? No. Pretty hot, I think. No, she's not that hot. Seventh Heaven. She's on that show. Jessica Seventh Simpson Heaven. is really hot. Yeah. And I don't care how stupid she is. In fact, that makes her that hotter. That makes her hotter. Oh. Huh? I think she's smoking <laughs> friggin' hot. I mean, that's a beautiful, right, so beautiful woman who I would... That's who's hot. Bang very hard, very, very quickly. I'd, I'd hit it hard and get out. <laughs> and I don't even think she's trying. To me, sex is like a military operation. Hit it hard, get out. It's like one right. of those covert operations. Yeah. You set up your thing, you get in, and you get out. You get in, you get out, you do what you have to do. <laughs> they won't even know we were there. Yeah. <laughs> That's my plan. <laughs> yes, Dina, go ahead, and then I'm going to bring in the... Uh... Okay, honey, I just want to tell you, I'm sorry. Um, my name is Christina. I just don't want to get... It. I, don't, I, don't want, I don't want you to say it wrong on the radio. It's Christina. Uh, I don't care what your name is. It doesn't <laughs> make a difference. Okay. It's irrelevant, really. Okay. Yes, uh, Dina. Okay. All right, Christina Dina. Yes. <laughs> what's up, Donna? <laughs> what, I mean, what's, who cares? What, go ahead. What do you have to say? That's the important thing. Okay. Um, I got breast implants. I had breast implants two years ago. Turn off your radio. Okay. Hold on one second. Oh, you vey. Just worried about her name getting right. Patrice no, well, O'Neill. I listen to it every morning, and I just I didn't turn it off. Patrice O'Neill, the comedian, coming <laughs> in in just a second. Here, go ahead. Okay. I got breast implants two years ago, and I hate them. The doctor did a horrendous job. They're too far apart, and they just look terrible. They look awful. Like I What'd you pay? To, uh, seven thousand. Oh, she should have gotten a good job. It's, it's, it's paying Did you go to a doctor in Manhattan? I'm sorry, what? Did you go to a doctor in Manhattan? No, I went to one like around where I live in uh, in Nyack, which is by oh, like that Palisades Center Mall. Let me ask you something. Uh huh. You think great plastic surgeons l uh, work in Nyack? No, but I didn't. What think are you it doing? Come out so bad. Like I'm so. Honey, bad. honey, listen to what I just said. Uh huh. If you're a great plastic surgeon, mm -hmm. are you going to set up practice in Nyack or Manhattan? Manhattan. Okay. Manhattan, you're Thank right. Thank you. All right. You are right. But it was closer. And I Go see uh, Dr. Dan Baker. Let him take a look at the damage. What did he do? Did he cut up your boobs? No, it, it was actually a woman. And I figured a she woman? Did, yeah, I figured I mean, she would do a better job. Yeah, the, breast but, implant's best done by a guy. Yeah. That's who you're trying see, to please. Everyone told me a girl. And I am very good listening to everybody. But you notice they're too far apart. Now, the scars, you can't see any scars. They're underneath. Can I tell you something? Sure. Yeah. First of all, stay on your stomach and do anal until <laughs> you get to the next doctor. So that way you don't have to be a Okay, I'll take, I'll take that. Bye. And she was probably <laughs> jealous of you, these women. And let me tell you something. Uh, you better you better go see uh, Dan Baker. That's the guy I recommend. Okay, I just gotta. I have to save up. Especially on a fix-up boob job. Now you gotta save up more money. Yeah, See, that's the problem. Save, I gotta save up more money now. So and go back to that broad and say, "Hey, listen, honey, give me back my I money." I went back to her. I said, "They're nothing like you said." I said, "I told you what I wanted, and they're nothing like I said." And what'd nothing. she say? She says, "Oh well, I can't help, but they come out like." I'm like, "Yes, you can. She can. That's what you go to all that school for." I said, that's the whole thing. Why don't and, you go like, to your next to doctor in in, uh, in uh, Staten Island? I'm sorry, what? No. I'm actually, I'm all the way upstate. Are you hot? 
Am I hot? Yes. Yeah. How old Absolutely. are you? I'm 22. What are you, stripper? Uh, I was. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. my, my dad kind of found out, and my dad's sick, and he got really upset, and I felt bad, so I stopped. So what are you doing now? Um, actually, I, I broke my leg a month ago, so nothing, but now I'm a pharmacy tech. Strip for three weeks. You'll have the money for those boobs. <laughs> three weeks. Oh, no. The strip places around here, they don't pay you nothing. I got nothing. And I'm, I'm telling you, see, I wanted to come in and see you. Let me ask you something. Where is, where, where is the Astrodome? The Astrodome? Yeah. I have no.